A breakaway faction from South Africa's ANC party are about to launch the Congress of the People, or COPE. But what's gone wrong with the ANC? Does this mean the ruling party will face serious opposition for the first time? And is this the beginning of the end of its grip on power? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Mariam Namazi. A breakaway group from South Africa's ruling ANC is launching a new party. The new Congress of the People, or COPE, are promising to clean up South African politics just months before next year's general elections. Well, the ANC has ruled Africa's biggest economy with a huge majority since the end of apartheid in the 90s. But in recent years, the ANC has gone from being a political stronghold to a deeply divided organization. To put it simply, the party was divided between supporters of the former ANC president, Thabo Mbeki, and those loyal to the current ANC leader, Jacob Zuma. The rift within the party became evident when Zuma ousted Mbeki as the party president in December 2007. Many Mbeki allies lost powerful positions in the party. Some tribes also lost the influence they had under Mbeki. While Mbeki denies being involved with COPE, many of his supporters are key members of the new party. Also, disagreements over economic policies have resulted in a Zuma-led ANC questioning Mbeki's conservative approach. Well, joining our discussion now are our guests in Johannesburg, Jesse Duarte, spokesperson for the African National Congress Party, or ANC. In Pretoria, Daniel Hammett, a research fellow at the University of Edinburgh. And joining us on the phone from Bloemfontein, Philip Dexter, spokesperson for the new Congress of the People Party, or COPE. Uh, Jesse Duarte, if I can begin with you, at the opening of the COPE Party conference, the new party's interim chairman, Masiwa Lakota, said that South Africans had lost faith in the dream of a vibrant rainbow nation and that the nation was now a country in despair. Do you agree with that assessment? <laughs> no, we don't agree with that. Uh, we believe that South Africa is becoming uh, a deeper democracy. We welcome the formation of new political parties um, and we wish COPE very well. Uh, we would just wish that they would uh, not be as negative about other political parties as they have been um, and focus their attention on their programs, which we are doing. We're working on the ground. We're not arrogant. We understand that we're going to have to work extremely hard to win the support of the voters in our country. We have very good programs. Uh, we have delivered to the people in this country, and we believe that we will continue to do more than we've been able to do in the past 14 years, given where we started from. Uh, 2.7 million houses to people is not nothing. Uh, we have had a very stable e economic situation in South Africa. We have, a, we have challenges indeed with um, joblessness, uh, and, and that is part of the world trend. We have been affected by the global crunch in the economies. Yeah. Uh, we do accept that there are challenges, but we certainly don't believe that anything has gone wrong uh, within the ANC that was perhaps not anticipated since January 2008 okay, after well, the Polokwane conference took place. Let me put, let me put that to, to Philip place. Dexter and Bloem Fontaine. What do you make of what uh, Jesse Duarte has just said, that yes, there are some challenges, uh, but that democracy is prog progressing just fine in South Africa? Well, I mean, we welcome the sentiment. I mean, it's the first time uh, anybody from the ANC has said that they welcome the launch of a new political party. Up until now, we've had to deal with insults, name-calling, intimidation of our members, the stopping of us using public facilities for our meetings. So if that's the new spirit, I think then we would welcome that. But, you know, I think what led to the formation of COPE is not simply a breakaway from the ANC. While a large number of the founder members of COPE were ANC members, what we've seen since then is a massive uh, influx of people from other political parties, people who have not been involved in politics up till now. And the reasons for those are, are complex, but essentially they boil down to a dissatisfaction with the, the, the governance that we've seen in the last few years, uh, apprehension about the new direction that the ANC yeah. seems to be taking in terms of policies. Daniel so, Hammett, you know, what do you make of what you've just heard? Why the disillusionment with the ANC? Where have they gone wrong? I think there are a number of areas where the ANC has succeeded tremendously, but at the same time, I think there's a lot of disquiet 
um, around the failures in service delivery, I mean 2.7 million houses is a huge number of houses, but over 14 years it does leave something to be desired. In terms of the development of water supplies, electrification, sanitation, there has been a lot of progress made, but I think poor communities, marginal communities, are feeling they're being left behind. They're looking at the, the elites who are progressing very well economically and feeling they're being left behind is one of the main reasons for its disillusionment. At the same time, there's been the recent debates around the ANC statements around the judiciary and other kind of political developments which are casting concerns, I suppose, over the consolidation of what would some would argue is a one-party state, and what perhaps cope and if it succeeds in developing a wide base of support, is to show a real deepening of democracy and to give the ANC a real challenge and really hopefully motivate both parties and parties across the spectrum to reorientate their views and the emphasis on to delivering for the poor, which is the key issue in this country at this time. Jesse Duarte, I just want to pick up on something that Philip Dexter said a little earlier. How do you respond to accusations that the, AMC, the ANC has been mounting a campaign of intimidation against COPE supporters? Well, you know, there's a very old political trick in this country, and that is a trick of um, spelling out danger when there's none. Uh, similarly, we can claim, and we have evidence, that COPE supporters as well have been very vociferous. In fact, the leader of COPE has been absolutely um, attacking in his stance towards ANC leadership. But we think that we really have to rise above this. Uh, the ANC is rising above this. We have asked our supporters to accept and understand that every we may have more political parties emerging in the next couple of years. This is the beauty of uh, what we struggled for, which is a constitutional democracy. And uh, we, we do anticipate that there may be new parties coming uh, when the local government election uh, into, in a year's time after the national election is over is, is, is announced. So we do not believe that um, we should continue with uh, calling Wolf. If there are uh, evidence of, of this intimidation that uh, uh, Mr. Dexter talks about, then we should all go to the IEC and make the complaints that we need to make so that these matters can be resolved through the party um, liaison committees. But uh, simply making oh, it well, uh, a Dexter, perception what's your that, to that should remain is wrong. Well, I agree. I don't want to waste time talking about the past too much. But, I mean, we do have evidence and we have submitted those complaints to the IEC uh, in the recent by-elections that took place. But I think more importantly, what we're interested in is, you know, ensuring that we can define a new vision for the country, one that unites people, one that overcomes the poor service delivery standards that we've seen, one that overcomes the entrenched racial sentiments that, that seem to be, you know, deepening in the country, the dissatisfaction of many people. I mean, a recent uh, survey by the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation showed a massive slump in public confidence across the board in all government institutions. The ANC has continued to attack the judiciary. I mean, over the last few days, we've had a number of court cases. Whenever a judge finds in favor of the ANC, the ANC accepts that judgment. But when it doesn't, the judges are counter-revolutionary. Those are the kinds of things, I think, that are causing concern. And we in the Congress of the People are saying that we've formed this organization because we want to defend the institutions of democracy. And we agree that the ANC built those institutions. But the ANC that we see today is not the ANC that built those institutions. Jesse Duarte, what do you make of that, that, that the ANC is losing public confidence, that yes, there has been some economic progress, but also that a significant proportion of the population has been excluded from those benefits? I think when you use the word significant, you're also trying to p persuade me that uh, there are too many people who are without benefits. But the reality is that our statistics do show that the people who benefited the most out of the leadership that um, the COPE uh, people grew out from are in fact the middle classes. And our position is that we, whilst we would like to stabilize the economy and keep it growing, we have to skew our policies in favor of the poor. And we, we've recognized that, in fact, our next five years of administration has to be very much heavily leaning towards um, looking at 
the sorts of delivery that will uh, tackle poverty, such as rural uh, infrastructure development, which has not been given a great deal of attention over the last um, 10 years. We also believe that uh, we have to strengthen those institutions of democracy, and I believe that we have to transform the judiciary in this country. The reality is that not many South Africans believe that they get a fair trial in South Africa uh, at the moment. And we believe that the judiciary is an anchor upon but which we ANC all have to stand. But the ANC has had 14 years at the helm to solve those problems. Is it perhaps someone else's turn uh, to, to try and make some progress no. on those issues? I, I, we, we're, not, we're not shifting the blame. We're taking responsibility as the ANC. And we have indeed um, got a vision and a plan to work on the transformation of the judiciary. You know, uh, it doesn't happen overnight. And we are a young democracy. 14 years is not 40 years. And we did have many, many decades of a judiciary that worked in a particular way, and it is time for that judiciary to be changed, to accept that um, people can say uh, a judgment is disappointing and, and not acceptable, at the same time believe in the rule of law. Um, we have to be able to extend uh, the tenets of our, of our democracy to every uh, facet of our, of our communities. You know, one of the biggest problems of yeah. the last 10 years was we could not criticize anything or anyone. At the moment, we are able to criticize not only ourselves very, very constructively and find solutions to problems that are real. And that's what the ANC is about, and that's what we will be doing uh, over the next five years. Right, well, it's time for a short break now. When we return, we'll discuss the challenges facing South Africa's new party and if they'll be able to make a difference. Stay with us.